recent. <laughs> well. So recently, I got a request to go a bit more in depth on how email development works and what I do in my role. Excuse me. If you've watched my most recent videos, you'll know that I currently work as an email developer for a digital agency. So I'll be going over the basics of how the process works in my role. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're interested in following my tech journey. Just to give a quick overview, there's three different types of email formats. One, you have plain text, which is just that plain text, no color formatting or anything like that. Second, you have rich text. This may include colors, fonts, images, etc. And this is what you may see in a typical email from a colleague or friend. And then you have HTML emails. Almost anything you can do with a web page can be done in HTML mail, including HTML, CSS, images, different fonts, etc. embedded into the body of the email. Someone I know referred to HTML emails as mini websites and that's kind of what they look like so that's what I'll be diving into today. But why would anyone want to send an HTML email? One very popular reason is branding. When you check your email you likely notice that your favorite businesses and organizations usually send you very high quality emails. So for example, here's an email from Netflix. Because I'm a subscribed user of the site, I received an email on what people are watching in my area. This is an example of an HTML email. And of course, it's personalized based on me as a customer. So you see it has my name, location, and also being able to add these titles to my list. Here's another example, an order receipt from a purchase that I made. It's personalized for me based on a product that I purchased. It has the company's brand logo and my personal order summary. Here's a promotion email for 50% off at one of my favorite smoothie shops. It's colorful, informative, and most people are probably more likely to read it because it looks so nice. So HTML emails are very popular with businesses but you could even build these for personal reasons as well, such as invitations to events, announcements, and things like that. There's a company called MailChimp, which is actually a very popular platform, and one of their specialties is HTML email templates for marketing. In my role specifically, I build emails for the healthcare industry. Of course, I can't share that work publicly. However, I built a basic HTML email that I'll be using to sort of demonstrate how the process works in my role. So the demo email has a header, body, image, promo code, and button. There's also a bit of personalization. So when the email actually goes live, cust customer would be personalized as the person's name who's receiving the email. And usually that's done with variables. First, I created the design in Figma, which is a mock-up design tool and then I exported it as a PDF. In my role, I don't create the designs, I just code them out. So it'll come to the developers as usually a PDF or PSD or both. I won't be going into too much detail with the code, but HTML emails are typically built using table-based code. And there's also frameworks that can be used as well. At the moment, we don't use any frameworks. What we do is build from a boilerplate and code out emails accordingly. So there's some email specific code here, such as the attributes inside of the HTML tag. There's also the bulletproof email button to ensure compatibility with Microsoft Office. And things like that can get pretty complex, especially for more advanced emails. But the structure here is what you'd see in a typical HTML file. And depending on what you're working on, the CSS may be in the same file or an external file. Once I finish coding out the email, one of the things I do is test it out to make sure it's compatible with different clients. One popular email testing tool is called Email on Acid, and <laughs> and this is used to test across multiple devices. So I'll do a quick test. So once that's entered in, I just need to paste over 
the code into the testing site. So it'll show how the email will look in various devices, mobile, desktop, and web. And I already see a problem here. The header and footer text isn't showing the correct font color in a lot of these. This is the original design, so as a developer, I definitely want to make sure this is working properly across all of these. So I'm going to check out the code to see how I can fix this. How I have this coded right now is I have two classes, header and footer, and I added color FFF, F F F on each one, which is the hex code for white. Unfortunately, with emails, sometimes these things can get stripped out based on the email client. So what I'm going to do instead is um, I'm going to create a class called white. And set the color to white and then add it directly to the table cell data. So first I'm going to go down to header, add a class of white directly to that cell, do the same thing here, and then go down to footer and do the same thing. And then now I'll go ahead and retest the code. Now it's working across all clients. And again, things like this can get pretty complex, especially for more advanced emails. You'll likely experience having to fix a ton of things to get your emails compatible with different clients, which is just a part of being a developer. Another kind of testing we do is live testing, which is basically sending the email as if it's a live email to see how it would look. And I'm going to be using this free online tool called Putsmail to perform a live test. And I'll type in, thank you for signing up. And then this box is where the code will go. So I'll paste in the HTML. send the email off to the wizard so for example we can see that the live email looks really good in Gmail also a tool such as Android studio can be used as well um, to perform live simulation testing Whew. So that's a little bit about what I do as an email developer. Of course, there's so much more that goes into this, but this was a more detailed overview. I've also left some links in the description that include the code from this video, the Figma design link, and some other resources where you can learn more about email development. Thanks for dropping by and see you next time. Bye.